This is a podcast about both having autism and living with someone who has autism. My mom is Sonia, and I'm Josh, and this is Josh Has Autism. Hey, everybody. Hey. Yeah, thanks for stopping by. I hope you're having a good day. You having a good day, Josh? Mm, It's going okay. It's going okay? Yeah. Yeah. Is anything wrong? Mm, something seems different, but I'm not sure what. Um, that happens a lot, don't you think? Yeah, it does. <laughs> it does. <laughs> it, it does. I know. I think that you're very connected to how you're feeling, mm-hmm. and you notice when something is off, but you, most of the time you can't really say what's off. Right. Yeah. So something's just off a little bit. Yeah. But you're sitting here with me anyway. Yep. We're doing a podcast, so thank you. Yep. I really appreciate it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so those of you listening, what happens is that whenever we do a podcast, I don't tell Josh what it is we're going to talk about. Um, so he's hearing stuff in the moment. Um, occasionally, I'll tell him... Generally. What, yeah, is. generally, like what the topic is, I don't, just so he has, so I don't spring it on him if it's going to be a real tough one. Right. So what I've noticed is that in other podcasts, especially the one I did with your sister last week, mm-hmm. um, as I used a term that and I just want to make sure that um, I explain what it means, and that is executive functioning. So I think that we've talked an awful lot about how you deal with just life in general mm-hmm. and why we think that you would benefit from a life coach or life skills coach. I shouldn't say life coach because I think um, that's something different. It connotates something different. But life skills, something mm-hmm. that you could benefit from, having a coach helping you with, with that. But the term uh, executive functioning keeps coming up. And what I want to say about that is just describe that that the ex- executive functioning describes the skills that are used to organize and to plan our lives that's basically it okay. it's it's the way that we process it's the way that we function it's the abilities that we have in order to basically create a life for ourselves to have friends to have relationships to get things accomplished when we need them to get accomplished like you know Clean up after yourself. Do the laundry. Clean the the bathtub. P- rinse dishes. Put them in the dishwasher. Things like that. If it's things like that, then I must be in trouble. <laughs> 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 what a, that's funny. Because those are the things that you have tr- difficulties with, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, I did a little bit of research. Because um, I thought... You know, if if you are constantly... Well, let me back up a little bit here, because this is what triggered it. Not only that I mentioned this executive functioning, that term, last week, but I think maybe it's come up before that as well, and I didn't explain it, so I wanted to do that today. But it was kind of spawned because a, a good friend and somebody that I've known for a very, very long time um, asked me, What is it that I'm hoping for with you? Like, what do I want? What am I trying to get? And she was, she's a friend. So she was just asking because she was curious. This was done Mm -hmm. in a a very kind and respectful way. Mm -hmm. Not like, what do you want? (laughs) It was was good. It was good. But it got me thinking because she was saying, what, what is it that I want from you? And she said something, just in as, as an observation, is that, well, what if this is good as it gets? Like, what if the things that, like, you have shown us what you can do, and why are we expecting anything more than that? Why are we expecting something different than what you've shown us you can do? And it just got me thinking about that, you know, and, and, and the whole concept. What? You were making the circles with your fingers, but it was right next to your head, so it looked like <laughs> so you were I was crazy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
I was I was meaning that I was continually thinking, not yes. that I was local in La Cabeza. Yeah, <laughs> right. I know. Right. Um, and it was just an interesting conversation. And I don't even think that she meant to trigger, you know, like this um, much time that I've spent thinking about this after we had the conversation. But it is, it's, it, it's interesting. Um, I think every parent, well, I shouldn't say every, because some parents are just... Jerks. Okay. Um, but most parents, I think really want the best for their kids and yeah. do everything they can to help them to succeed. So the first answer to that, why are we keep pushing you? Why do we keep expecting more of you? Um, it's because we don't give up on you. That's the first easy answer, right? It's because we don't give up on you. Mm-hmm. And we always expect more because if, if this is as good as it gets, then... It's still not going to stop us from pushing you because what if it's not? Right. Like, how do we know that? And anyway, that that those questions were really beneficial because it really got me thinking about how you function, what you have difficulties with, what you do well, and I'm thinking, okay, is that something that's are those the Josh isms? Or is that kind of something that everybody on the spectrum is dealing with? So there's some things that fall under executive functioning. So far, are you with me? Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. So things we're talking about, like setting a schedule, <clears throat> if you're going to run out of something, this is something we've talked about before, too. Mm-hmm. Like when you're running out of something... Yeah, don't wait until it's out. Right. And make sure that to let you know at the very least right. beforehand. So we, right. We put on the list. Yeah. And you let me know that it's been put on the list. Or if you're going to go someplace, you know, have the foresight to make sure that you have clothes clean. Yeah. You know, you're going to go out, I guess, tomorrow is a bowling night. Yeah. So, you know, that's something that you're going to need to think about. Do you have clo- clean clothes to wear to bowling tonight? Tomorrow. Yes, I do. So it's during the day? Uh, evening. Oh, what did I say? Today. I did say today? Yeah. Oh, man, it's so <laughs> weird. I'm having problems with hey, executive functioning. Because <laughs> I was thinking tomorrow. I, yeah. don't know what I, I don't know why I said it that way. It's kind of weird. Mm. But that, those are the kind of things that, that fall under this category. Okay. Unintentional example. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> um, so the lack of executive functioning makes it hard to plan and manage a household. That is a, That totally makes sense to me now. Because I didn't realize, I wasn't putting it together. That, so we built this apartment for you. Mm-hmm. It's like a mother-in-law suite. Mm-hmm. We took a two-car garage, turned it into this beautiful apartment... Mm-hmm. Um, and you were there for a while, mm-hmm. and you asked to come back over here, and because it was just kind of too much. You said it was too much space. It was too much responsibility. And it certainly didn't help that Xander was there at the time either. Xander the cat. Yes. Yes. Who is who was was a, a, a little ball of crazy. Oh my gosh. That. Um, He's so so one thing I don't know if we said this about Xander before, but um, um, Nana is very very allergic to to, to cats. So um, Josh has a cousin that lives in Atlanta, um, actually three cousins that live in Atlanta, and um, they said that yeah they'll take Xander. Mm-hmm. So he's um, happy to create havoc in Atlanta just as he was here <laughs> so, but anyway they say he's doing really really well yeah. but I remember you told me that in the middle of the night you had this clock that was hung by um, kind of had a rope on it Yeah. so it would hang from the hook at the at the top point of the rope and mm-hmm. would then hang down and Xander would in the middle of the night go over and push that clock so it scraped against the wall yes. over and over till it woke you up <laughs> yes <laughs> that was one of the things he would do, yes. Yeah. Crazy cat. 
Crazy cat. It's just crazy. It, it was awesome though because he'd sleep on my on my chest. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. He would. I know that you liked that about him. Yeah. Yeah. He was a really cool dude. Yeah. Um, but but living out there, you were saying, was too much for you to handle. Mm-hmm. It really is the size of like a studio apartment. Um, so when you came over here back into the house, I had to move out of my office. So you have the dad and I now share an office and you got what was my office. Mm -hmm. And I noticed that a few days ago I was just like, come on. It's like, it was such a mess. <laughs> it's like, come on. It's just a little tiny space, but it's a disaster. Which explains why I moved like three things and then you were okay with it. <laughs> Maybe. It could, it could be. <laughs> it could be. But it even smells better. You did laundry, so it's a good thing. I don't know. It looks. It just looks better. So you, kudos to you because it looks and it smells better. Mm-hmm. Um, but I didn't know that that was something that was a legitimate thing that you had a hard time doing. And I, and you couldn't put it into words for me. Right. Like, I asked you numerous times, what is it that's so difficult? I know that I can't say to you, clean your room, because that's not clear-cut enough. That's not something that's precise. If I say to you, um, could you move that off of that space and hang it in your closet... You would do that. Yeah. If you had instruction like that, it's very easy for you to do it. Right. If I say, what, well, like, what happens if I just say to you, clean your room? Besides it not getting clean. <laughs> um, it's just too broad of a topic. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know where to start. I don't know what to do after that. And I don't know how to finish it. Right. Because I, it all, there's so many things I could do in order. And if I don't give you specifics, you couldn't start on one of those things? My mind becomes overwhelmed because there's so many different things that I could do. Right. And so because of that, it makes it very difficult for me to be able to process which order I should go with. Mm-hmm. Because like I said, my mind's overwhelmed. And I'm, and that can sometimes start for me to somewhat panic. Mm-hmm. To feel anxiety? Yes. Yeah, right, right. Um, this might not be the same thing, but I'll, I'll, there was this, we were talking about something. Um, and I, and I said if, um, so if somebody said to me, uh, Go, can you go get that whatchamacallit? And uh, I said, I would say, like, whatchamahoo? <laughs> like, I don't know what you're talking about. And But for you, if somebody asked that to you, I said, what would happen? And you said, well, it wouldn't make any sense to you. You wouldn't know what to do with that information. So after realizing contemplating me maybe for seconds I'm, I'm thinking you're talking about it would just be a non-conversation and you would it was just like it didn't even happen because that's not something that you can process so you would just go on doing whatever it is you're going to do I think that word is not a good good example because there's a candy bar called a whatchamacallit oh okay okay Okay. What if I? What is so? So if somebody just said, uh, "Go get that thing over there." Yeah, it's way too broad. Yeah, that's, that's what I was. That's what I was trying yeah. to ask. I didn't think about the candy bar, but <laughs> are, I never had one. Are they good? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I didn't think about that. So, but the the question is, like, I wonder if this falls into that category as well for you, anyway. That if I just say, "Go get that thing," and you just answered it, that that that's too broad as well. Yeah. So there's been times through your life that um, I've probably thought that you were just being difficult mm-hmm. and and w- would just get frustrated and with you just not, you know, not, not the, to go over and get that thing example, but more like to, to not clean your room, like where right. I wouldn't understand 
why aren't you just doing something? Yeah. Just pick one thing. If you just did one thing, you know. And now I know that if I have to say to you, I have to spell it out. You need to wash your sheets today along with your laundry. And then you do it. Yeah. And one of the things that we have talked about is that how if you get distracted, then you can't. If you're on the way to do something and something distracts you, you forget entirely about what it was that you were doing. Yes. Does that happen often? Yes. Yes. One perfect example <clears throat> of that is the laundry. Mm -hmm. If I'm not focusing on the laundry, then, like, you know it takes a while for the laundry to, to finish up. Mm-hmm. So let's say I put a load in into the washer, and that takes what forty minutes or so. I don't know. During that time, <coughs> I can't Excuse just me. sit there and wait for it. I have to be doing other things as well, mm -hmm. mainly by your direction. Mm -hmm. Right. And because of that, I. I'm focusing on the now, mm -hmm. and so I don't remember about the clothes being in the washer needing to go into the dryer. Right. Right. And so it's that thing that, that for those of us that don't have autism, we struggle to live in the now. You know, like we meditate. <laughs> we, mm -hmm. we, we do all kinds of things that will to, to help us to bring us into the now because if you're not in the now, oftentimes you're worried about the past, you know, you're concerned about the future. But I really think that that's one thing that you've got in all of this that one of the things, because I think there's many, I really think it's pretty awesome how you can just be in the moment. And while that's a positive thing, what you're saying is that when you're in the moment, you forgot about the previous moments where you were doing <laughs> laundry, <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. So sometimes that trips you up. So to be, to be fair, though, sometimes it's hilarious to see what you guys do whenever you're worried about the past or future. <laughs> <I've>, <laughs> I bet. I've never thought about that before. <laughs> we probably look like nutcakes, right? <laughs> That's funny. I never thought about that because for you, you've never done that. You just are here right now. So hmm. that's pretty cool. That's not to say that I don't worry about the future or the past sometimes, but for the most part, I live in the present. That's right. That's right. If we talk about things in the past, you can recall them with such detail that I don't even remember half of the things that you are putting in there as detail. So it's pretty amazing. And I think I think the future, th that concern. You can tell me if I'm wrong. That concern seems to be kind of uh, when you have those, it's just fleeting. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And it's very difficult sometimes to try and deal with it whenever it comes to future things. Mm -hmm. Like a perfect example of that would be school. Mm-hmm. And people ask, what do you want to do with your life? I don't know. I don't really know too much about what I want to do. It, you know? It, you, what you're talking about, and I'm kind of excited about this because I see things in a new way. Mm -hmm. I knew that. I, kn I know that. We've had these conversations. But what I've learned recently is that is executive functioning those are skills that that are in that category hmm. so it makes sense because it's planning it's organizing yeah so it makes sense that that would be something that would be a struggle for you to do okay so it's just interesting and, and i'm not I, I i'm still finding out about it but i'm really interested in coming up with ways that help you through that and we'll talk about that in just a minute all right, okay. but I want to tell you what the what what the lack of executive functioning um, can do. So it makes it hard to plan um, and manage a household, like I said, but also to keep a schedule, stay on track, and stay on task. You agree with that, right? Yes. <laughs> right, 
Right. So, so the the main um, skills that fall under this category that we're talking about today is um, time management, sustained attention, self control, planning, organization, task initiation, which is why you're saying I need to prompt you um, on the laundry and, and what you're doing when the stuff is in the wash to have you do other things, right? Mm-hmm. So, and working memory. Which is working memory is just a it's hold it's like holding on to information long enough to use it. So like it comes in play when you um, need to concentrate and follow instructions, and that falls in this category also. Or tell an appropriate joke. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> yep, that's true. Um, uh, metacogni- metacognition. Mm-hmm. Um, it's the knowledge and understanding of your own thinking. So, example, it's 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 you being aware of what you, how you think, what you know. Mm-hmm. So it's basically thinking what you think and knowing what you know, doing what you do. It's it's all that. It's like it's so. For, so it's being me. Well, yeah. So I'll give you an example though. For me, I know that I don't remember names. So when somebody tells me a name. I'm not. I don't remember it the first time. So it's not id the sense of self. It's something else. It's how you think. It's how, how I you think. Uh, another way is how you process. Okay. So each of us personally, it's how what we know about ourselves. So I introspection. Know, mm, kind of. Yeah. Okay. Kind of. I think a little bit different because it's just how the the the. It, it's not as deep, I think, <laughs> but it is what we how, how we think, what we know about how we think, what we know about ourselves. Okay. Um, and the reason it's important is because knowing how we do these things helps us to be able to do those things better, but also they affect the things that I've just been talking about. Okay. So, me knowing that I can't remember names that I know that about my thought process. Mm -hmm. I know that I remember faces. So when I see somebody, I remember their faces. And I'm also not um, embarrassed or uncomfortable asking a name. Even when I met somebody, they could even be here in the house. If I just met, you know, you bring a friend over or something, I'm not, you know, uncomfortable asking their name again. Right. You know, because I just say, I... I don't remember names. Can you yeah. tell me your name again? And that's just the way that people think. It's the way that I think? No, I'm, I mean just in general. Is that it, it, with people trying to remember names or faces, mm-hmm. people will say, I'm good with faces, but yeah. I'm not good with names. Or I'm good right. with names, but I'm not good with faces. Or I just suck at people. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. Yeah, that's funny. And so... Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, it's just a people thing. Mm-hmm. All right. And a and, um, couple final things that, I'm, that, that I've been thinking that goes in this category is flexibility and perseverance. So when we th- think about those things, it's all the stuff that we've always been talking about. Like the... The self-control, like, you know, you needing to be first in line. Yeah, the yeah. flexibility is being able to accept others' ideas, for example, mm-hmm. other than my own, even if they're not right. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, I, can't, I can't believe you just said that. <laughs> yeah, because... Uh, we did one of the podcasts before because you always think you're right. <laughs> yeah, that's why I said it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Also, it was a joke. It was a semi-serious joke, but okay. yes. Okay, I got it. I got it. So it's about time management, too. Yeah. I suck at that. <laughs> yeah. You're, t- time management is something kind of hard for you to get a grasp on, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and it makes sense to me that if time management is different, then the being a self-starter in something at a particular time is very um, exhausting for you. It's overwhelming, yeah. the thought of having to do that, it seems, because I know that how you look, like you get this kind of glossy kind of look sometimes when 
you are given a task where you know you've got to start it at a certain time and to keep it uh, organized and to then to be attentive to that pretty much the only time I think that I'm good at that is whenever I'm cooking right which I think is a little bit strange but it, that's the only idea that comes to mind that whenever I'm able to successfully use time management which is really interesting and if anybody out there knows what the answer here is um, let us know let us know because it's super it's super fascinating to me because you're absolutely right when you go in the kitchen from the beginning of of the cooking to the end you are very attentive 100% yeah and you don't forget things and you are willing to try new things yeah I, ex- I sometimes experiment in the kitchen mm-hmm. and to try and make new things so it tastes good. Mm-hmm. Well, you love to eat. Oh, yeah. And, yeah, <laughs> so you love a variety of tastes and, um, I don't know about textures. What do you think, textures? Um, some, there are some textures that I cannot stand. Like what? Like sour cream. Mm-hmm. It's not the fl- it's not the flavor. It's well, it, the- it's the flavor too for that. But uh, what is it? Because sour cream, the texture would be to me like yogurt. But you like yogurt, right? Yeah, and I also like whipped cream. Yeah. So it, I don't. It's weird. I. <laughs> but uh, another one is uh, cottage cheese. Mm-hmm. I cannot stand cottage cheese. Because of the texture. Yeah. So the taste is okay, but you can't get past the texture. I don't know if it tastes okay because I can't get past <laughs> the texture. It's out, of your, it's out of your mouth before you... Right, right, yeah. Yeah. All right, I get it. I get it. But that's a really good example. Yeah. And interesting that you sometimes... <clears throat> it's very difficult for you to not be rigid in your way of thinking on certain things. Mm-hmm. And yet, when it comes to food... You're open to trying new food. Within reason, yes. Sure. Sure. Like if it was if it if it looked like something unappetizing to you, mm-hmm. then you would not be willing to try that. Right. Like I'm never going to eat a live octopus. Right. Or escargot. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I get it. I get it. So interesting that all of these things do fall under executive functioning mm-hmm. and I think that it's it's uh, interesting that the, the very things that we've struggled with in getting you moving forward all seem to fall into this category and they didn't seem connected and this is why I'm saying that this is such a big deal to me maybe everybody out there listening you're like uh, duh <laughs> I didn't know this because I was looking at them like they were separate issues Right. Right. And so sometimes it would get very frustrating. Like, why aren't you just doing this? Why can't you just do this? And when our friend asked me these questions about you, like, what what if this is it? I wanted to know, is this it? Like, and what, why, what does this look like? Right. You know, and what can it look like? And if we're pushing too hard, if we're not pushing enough, or our our, our our expectations reasonable and what I found out is that sometimes the answer is yes that we probably are expecting too much of you in certain areas of your life that you do need the prompting and the redirecting Um, and I am very interested in finding a new way to help you to approach those things So that you don't rely on us guiding and redirecting so much. Right. Um, One of the things that I thought of that I mentioned to you the other day is that I I saw this watch. I'm looking for a watch that it doesn't have an alarm that goes off, but it just vibrates when the when time is up. I need that because when I'm on stage, I need to have that reminder. Right. Because I don't have a... Uh, majority of the time, there's not a clock for me to see. 
right. from being up there. And even if there is one in the room, the lights are in my eyes. <laughs> I can't right. see anything anyway. Right. Um, but I don't want to go over time. And I want to make sure that I do enough time. Right. So what I've had so far was this little thing that would, um, you know, it would just, it would just, I hooked it on the back of my pants or my, my belt um, on the back. And it, it would vibrate and let me know then. Well, at this point, I don't want to carry that around anymore. So I want to just to have it on my wrist because mm-hmm. I just don't want to have it. I can give you a rubber band so it sticks to your wrist. <laughs> no, thanks. <laughs> no, thanks. We can be a bit classier than that, I think. Okay. Um, yeah. So I, anyway, I looked up watches that, that, had the, the, that did the vibration instead of just the alarm. Mm-hmm. Well, there's some that are really expensive that... They they actually do more than I need them to do. So I'm not interested in that. But in the process, I saw these watches that had repeating alarms. Mm-hmm. And what they do is the alarm goes off and it, it, vib- it vibrates. And I, I suppose it could also make a sound. Mm-hmm. But I was looking at this for it to vibrate. Right. <clears throat> Well, when it goes off, then it does it again, whatever time you set it to go off again, whether it's 10 minutes, 5 minutes. Mm-hmm. And and if you have not accomplished what that initial timer vibration was, was reminding you of, there's, there's a second reminder that's going off. Okay. And then maybe even a third reminder that's going off until you go and you do that thing. So right now... You have your phone set so that the alarm goes off when it's time to take medication. Right. So I'm wondering if we got you this watch and had certain responsibilities assigned to the time that that goes off. And you wouldn't just turn it off and and keep doing what you're doing, but it it would repeat. Right. So that right. you would be reminded, because I think that's what you're saying, and that's what I'm learning by this new information, is that when you get distracted, it's very difficult um, for you to go back into that task initiation on your own. So that that watch that I'm talking about could be, let's say it goes off at one in the afternoon. Um and if if there's something that we have set up so that thing at one o'clock at at one o'clock, if it goes off and you don't get up and do it, it's going to remind you, hmm. and then it's going to remind you another time. So you will get up and hopefully accomplish that thing. Like this, this is something that might help. With it could be like the. the because because I get, I get right because you have a difficult time with a task initiation, this watch will help you to do that. Yeah, and remind you to do that. So it's kind of like a a way for you to get the prompting and redirecting without it coming from me. Right, I'm the one that I think ninety five percent of the time, maybe more, <laughs> is the one. I'm the one that is prompting and redirecting. Yeah, and and um, otherwise, you know, Dad. Help dad steps in or or bug, mm-hmm. right? So, what do you think about that? It's worth a shot, yeah. Because, <laughs> um, basically, what it feels like to me is that what you're saying is that you lose sense of time, mm-hmm. and otherwise, you don't, you're not consciously. Thinking that, oh, I need to do these things today. I need to accomplish these things. And there is a connection by the things that you're not... These things that you have told me in the past that you have a difficult time doing um, and you can't remember. So what the conversation goes is, well, you have to take the trash out. Okay. Josh, the, the trash night... The, the trash needs to be taken out and the trash cans need to go to the road. Okay. Josh, <laughs> mm-hmm. why didn't you go do this? And what I'm saying is that if we... I'm recognizing that that is something that's would be helpful for you to have a watch 
Right. So that you could do those things on your own without having to for to have other humans push you in that direction. Right. We might find that it doesn't work, but it would be awesome if it does. Yeah. Then I know that there's difficult. I mean, people talk about having we we've used all these right a calendar, mm-hmm. phone reminders, mm-hmm. uh, um, um, a list of things to do. Right. We've talked about having a list on your computer that's connected to your phone that you're reminded in different ways. But it seems like a watch would be an easy, just once it's programmed. Yeah. And maybe connected to that when that we can have um, the we can have a a list of things like a calendar that whatever day it is when it goes off, you look at that thing that you're supposed to do. Hmm. And and then you're reminded of what it is that you're asked to accomplish, yeah. whether it's. I can I can see that happening. Yeah, like for daily events, right? Like yeah. I don't know if we're t- if we're not. I'm not talking about even if it's just a time to do your chores. Right. Then that, you would go look at the calendar. Yeah. Would that is that seem like something that's reasonable for you? That if this if your alarm on your watch goes off, you go look at a calendar. And you see what it is that you're responsible for doing. Yes. I think that that is a much more likely scenario for me to do stuff than just trying to remember to look at the calendar every day. Right. Because for some reason, that just doesn't work. And I know that you said that even if we put up signs, even if we put up a calendar, even if we put up a list, even if it was on the mirror in the bathroom, you, you I'd, said that... I'd not see it. You you say that it just becomes so commonplace that you overlook it. Yeah. So, let's try this one. Let's do this. Let's find this, order this watch, and and see how it helps out. All right. Yeah. Cool. Well, I'm excited about it. Mm -hmm. I'm excited because it's... It's a struggle, It's and it's frustrating. I, I know it's frustrating for you. It's so frustrating for your dad and myself to constantly feel like we're having the same conversations all the time. Yeah. And I do take responsibility in this because I didn't realize that what majority of those conversations where everybody was frustrated Mm -hmm. falls in the category of executive functioning. And I'm finding out that those are the very things that you struggle with. You couldn't tell me that, <laughs> so you know, I it just it just took a little bit. So yeah, <laughs> you've been griped at to do things for what the last twenty five years. <laughs> Longer. Longer. So, well, <laughs> yeah. Well, you were a little guy. You didn't have too much to do when you were like four. So anyway, <laughs> all right, good, good deal, good deal. So we'll do that. We'll we'll leave it at that. Okay. And um, I know that you're getting antsy. Yeah. Yeah. He's holding me up like about five minutes ago. Help showed me like five fingers. Like just wrap it up, <laughs> wrap it up, mom. All right, we'll do that. Um, yeah, very cool. I'm excited about that. Um, so thanks, Josh. I really appreciate it. We're gonna go get that watch and and see what happens. Thanks everybody for hanging out with us. Um, yeah. A couple things that I wanted to mention that we usually don't. Uh, wherever you listen to us, um, if you like what we're doing, if you wouldn't mind going to, and, and doing a, on a rating scale, I guess it is, if you'd give us five stars. Um, don't if you don't like it. Yeah. <laughs> um, we, we... Don't, don't go against how you feel. Yeah. But if you do, that would help us out a lot if you just gave us five stars for what, what it is that we're doing here. Another thing is that if um, if your company or you know of a of an organization that that's looking for speakers, um, we we speak on this subject. I do the speaking, and Josh comes along and does a Q and A afterwards. Yeah. So uh, it's very possible we'd love to take part in your uh, organization or your your company's function. So keep us in mind when mm-hmm. something comes up. So we really appreciate that. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. We uh, really, really appreciate it. And the, the messages that we're getting from people mean so much to us. And um, we're getting um, a lot. So it, it, it gives us um, 
the uh, information that we need to know that what we're doing is 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 helping so it, it kind of spurs us on to keep going so thank you for that if you've sent something and you haven't heard back um you, you will very very soon um yeah so anyway i think we're done all right all right thanks everybody love you bye